So what is the most abundant matter in the universe? Looking around us, we might say maybe plastic or concrete, solid things and complex compounds. Of course, air or water if we're looking only at our home planet. Indeed, the most common element on Earth is oxygen. But what if I told you the most abundant matter around us can't be seen or felt? What if I told you that we aren't really even sure of what it is? Hello, my name is Shin Ran Leo, and I'm a professional hunter of the invisible at the University of Edinburgh. Unfortunately and sadly, I'm not a ghostbuster. I look for something called dark matter. We know that dark matter is the most abundant matter in the universe, and the race is on in particle physics to find out exactly what it is. And I search for it deep underground inside an old abandoned gold mine. I can't discuss particle physics and the University of Edinburgh without mentioning our own Professor Peter Higgs and the discovery of the Higgs boson, which was announced on the 4th of July, 2012, a day that is now referred to among particle physicists as Higgs Dependence Day. The discovery of the Higgs boson came almost 50 years after it was first predicted and completes one of the most rigorously tested models in science to date. It performs so well, we call it the standard model. Yet we know it has to be flawed because the standard model doesn't account for gravity or the dark universe. The story of dark matter starts much earlier than Professor Higgs, and it doesn't start below our feet in an old abandoned gold mine, but far above us in the sky. As far back as the 1880s, scientists like Lord Kelvin at Glasgow and later Fritz Wicke at Caltech were observing galaxies and clusters of galaxies when they noticed that more gravity was needed to hold the galaxies together than the stars they could see. So they proposed the existence of an unseen mass or something they called dark matter. But the mystery remained largely unexplored until the 70s when an American astronomer called Vera Rubin did her pioneering work measuring the rates at which galaxies rotate. She was studying the way stars moved around galaxies when she noticed an anomaly. She was expecting that the star furthest away from the galactic center would move more slowly than those near the core as predicted by the work of Sir Isaac Newton, who was then and remains today a giant in the world of physics. Instead, she found that the stars at the edge of the galaxy moved just as fast as those closer in, moving so fast you'd expect them to fly off at large distances. But the fact that they don't indicates that there must be something more than gravity of the stars themselves holding the galaxies together. But we can't see it, and that is again why it's called dark matter. But we also call it dark because we simply don't really know what it is. And yet since the 70s, we've had a lot more evidence to support the existence of dark matter. In fact, everywhere we look in the universe, we see the need for dark matter to explain our observations. But so far, all of our evidence for the existence of dark matter comes from astronomical sources. And what scientists really want to do is to be able to detect dark matter directly in a laboratory. And there are broadly three ways to go about doing that. You can make it, break it, or shake it. So you can make dark matter by smashing particles together at extraordinary energies in a collider like the Large Hadron Collider at CERN. You can break it by looking for dark matter annihilation signatures from space. And if dark matter acts like ordinary matter, when it self-annihilates, it creates radiation. And we're trying to detect that radiation using experiments on board the International Space Station. Or you can wait for a kick or a shake by making a large target and waiting for dark matter particles to smash into your detector and see it that way. And this third method has really been the most successful method of dark matter searches to date. Exploring the largest regions of where dark matter is expected to be. And this is the method I work on. I work on an experiment called Lux Zeppelin and it's currently under construction and due to switch on shortly. So watch out for our first results later this year in 2021. The results can only go one of two ways though. If we find dark matter, then pop goes the champagne bottle, followed by a swift trip to Sweden to accept a gold medal from the Nobel Committee. Or if we see nothing, then it's back to the drawing board. Our detector is set in an old abandoned gold mine 1.6 kilometers deep in the heart of South Dakota, USA. We build our detectors deep underground to shield us against cosmic radiation, which bombard the Earth's surface and which would otherwise swamp the rare dark matter interactions inside our detector. Even then, we still have to carefully choose the least radioactive, the most radio pure material we can find to build our detector. Because our planet Earth is unfortunately a radioactive planet, and that radiation can mimic dark matter signals if they're allowed to get inside our detector. 
We're building the largest dark matter target ever to give dark matter the best chance of bumping into our detector. And if everything works as planned, when we switch on, the Lux Zeppelin detector will be the most radio pure cubic meter in the known universe and the most sensitive dark matter detector to date. And with it, we can explore new frontiers and whatever we find will open up a whole new era of physics with profound impacts to our understanding of how the universe as we see it today came into existence. So the future is dark. <laughs>